Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to the Canadian Can eLearn or Can eLearn Live's uh, webinars. Uh, today we're pleased to launch a series of uh, symposium highlight webinars and we're starting with Mario Pochat and Jody Polowick. Uh, Mario from Vancouver Animation School and Jody from SunWest School Division uh, will be sharing their uh, creating unique opportunities for students and using 3D animation for art and technology. So without further ado, I'll mute my mic and turn it over to the two of you. Yeah, there you are. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I think, Jody, you can go first. Sure. That would be lovely. I am just trying to figure out how I get on my screen. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to share my desktop, and I'm not quite sure. Share, share your desktop, desktop is fine. And anything that's Zoom window related will be there, but we won't see it. I am not quite sure. Oh, can you see my desktop now? No, you have to click on share screen. Beautiful, thank you. And then a window pops up. Double click on that window that you want to share. Beautiful. We've got thank it, you. perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, uh, this is uh, just a little discussion talk about building partnerships. Um, and I'll start off with a quick introduction about myself and how my school division has built partnerships and then I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mario so he can um, discuss a little bit more about the partnership that we've started building together. Um, so, uh, I am in Keniston, Saskatchewan and this is actually, I want to acknowledge that we are actually on Treaty 4 land. Um, we are a K-12 to school. Uh, we have over 2,000 students, uh, and in this building, in this small, small little village, there are 55 teachers plus additional staff, which are like learning coaches, tech support, uh, admin support, administration, and we offer over 130 different courses. And some of the ways that we're able to offer some of those courses is because we have been able to um, build partnerships. And Mario is in Vancouver at Vancouver Animation School. They are a post-secondary institution. They have over 500 students, 15 teachers plus other staff. Um, and the teachers that they have uh, that are actually teaching the courses are actually professional animators that have worked with Disney and Pixar. So as far as like animation courses and arts-based classes, you really can't get much better than that. Um, what the, we found at SunWest and at the Distance Learning Center is that there are definitely some benefits of partnerships. Um, there are uh, expertise and resources. Uh, we're able to bring in outside expertise uh, and resources that we just don't have within our school um, base and within our school uh, teacher expertise base. Uh, it's also a way of cost sharing as well, which is very good. Um, it does allow for smoother transitions from um, our students into post-secondary um, education and also into smoother transitions right into industry right out of high school. Um, the opportunities um, the opportunities that our kids get where they get to go out and work with and meet other people sometimes in job placements, again, it's just not something that you can learn in a classroom. So that's a real fit to them. And equity, there's a lot of opportunities that kids in rural areas in the middle of the province, middle of the prairies, don't get the same um, opportunities as kids in some of the cities. So that's a, another really big benefit to um, to partnerships. Uh, some of the institutions that we have partnered with um, are the University of Saskatchewan, and we've partnered with them in a couple of different ways. One of them is the Edwards School of Business. Um, we've co-developed a course with them that is a dual credit. It is a sort of a business 101 credit course, or one course, and um, they are allow, uh, the, sorry, the, the business course um, 
it is taught or it is uh, based on a university course. It's taught with our teachers and uh, the students, the real benefit is if they pass the course, they get a high school credit, they get a university credit and uh, they do get a scholarship for the Edwards School of Business, which is, uh, I think it's actually $6,000 that they can get up to, which is outstanding for, for them for their first year of school. Um, we also have partnership with them through the arts and education or, or the arts and science uh, department where it is sort of a university 101 course that we've co-developed with them and it gives them a lot of the skills that they will need to be successful in university. So a lot of the um, planning skills that they need, a lot of the writing skills that they need, a lot of communication skills that they need. Uh, and the students that have taken this class, the dropout rate for them in university is very low um, uh, if they've taken this course, which is really, really a benefit uh, to them and to everyone. Uh, we've also partnered with Sask Polytechnic. It used to be called SIAST, um, and uh, there are multiple courses that we've developed with them that are act as dual credits. So they get a high school credit, and then they get a post-secondary credit as well. And uh, a lot of these are a way for them to explore different things while they're still in high school, um, and they're not necessarily paying tuition or paying rent uh, someplace uh, you know, in Saskatoon, if they're in a rural area, um, they don't have to go into the city to do these courses. They can do them in high school. They can decide, is this a career path that I'm interested in? And um, it's really, it's, it's a good way for them to get their toes wet in a lot of different areas. Um, some of them are, uh, there's also some boot camps that they've developed. So students can go in on a weekend and try a whole bunch of different things to see where, what they've liked. We do a lot of the theory and content for those. And um, then, of course, the SAS Poly and industry give them those boot camp skills and work experience. Uh, one of our most successful and popular ones is the Class for Power Engineering. Um, program that we were working with them on. Uh, a class four power engineer is um, all power stations in the country require fourth class power engineers to to work at them. So uh, even within the city of Saskatoon, there's the big one that's powering the city, but the university and the hospitals all have their own power plants, and they need people to, to have those entry level skills to begin a career in power engineering. We supply the theory and core content and Sask Power does the on-site training and Sask Polytech does the, um, the steam time because you need X amount of time working with the boilers and the steam, um, other steam equipment to get this, this qualification. And when students pass this, they of course get, I think they get two high school credits and they get their fourth class power engineer certification, which gives them a job that they can get out of high school that can pay them up to about 80 grand a year. So that's a pretty good deal for those students. Um, our, the teacher that we have teaching this, she actually went and got her fourth power, class power engineering certification. So she's uh, eligible to teach the course. She's also working on her third class power engineering certification. Um, just we might be able to offer something in that vein as well in the future, which is uh, interesting. Uh, we also have other industry that we partner with. Ag in the Classroom is a big one. Um, we've co-developed multiple courses with them for agriculture, um, both at, at the 10, 11, and grade 12 levels. Um, Western Equipment Dealers, again, we've partnered with them de developing a lot of training programs. They're the people that go and they fix the great big tractors that you need for agriculture in this province. So we do the theory and then the local dealerships provide like the work placements, which is a good partnership. Um, and then Great Plains College, um, they, we've got a care aid continuing care aid um, course that we offer through them. We, for this one, we, it's a little bit different. We promote it to our students, but they take care of all of the instruction, but they do get a high school credit as well. So that's, that's a really benefit to them. And as you can see, a lot of these have been very much ag industry based or equipment industry based. And in Saskatchewan, that's the reality of uh, the type of employment that we need in this province. Um, 
We also have a, the SASC Safety Council Young Worker Readiness Program, um, all kinds of things where they can get certification while they take other courses. We've got the first aid, um, the women's training, transportation of dangerous goods. Those are integrated into our courses so they can get their certification while they're taking a course and then they have the certification um, so they can go and go out into the work industry and they're ready for um, whatever comes their way really. Uh, and the safety council in Saskatchewan is very, very good about sharing that those resources because they want to have people certified uh, in these programs. The more people certified, the safer we all are. Um, like I said earlier, a lot of these are industry-based and ag-based. Um, the one that we've started to develop with Mario is definitely different. Uh, so we have to step back and we have to ask ourselves some of these big questions. Uh, and this is what we ask for all of the um, partnerships that we form uh, is like, does this partnership benefit our students? And our division is very, very good at saying yes to almost every one of these types of partnerships when an opportunity arises because uh, if there's, uh, there's experiences and expertise that we just cannot give them ourselves. So for the most time, yes, uh, a partnership does benefit the students. Um, the next steps are a little more tricky. We have to see if it actually fits within an existing curriculum because everything has to be curriculum based for us to be able to offer it. Um, if it does fit into an existing curriculum, we do what's called adopting it and adapting it. Uh, so if it's like, if, if most of the course, we can find curricular connections to uh, we adopt it and we just make slight variations uh, adapting it to, to what we already have. If we don't have it in our existing curriculum, like the power engineering one that I mentioned earlier, we actually work with the ministry in creating curriculum for them to approve and then we develop a course based on that. It is a very long process, but uh, it is beneficial. and. Right now, uh, this brings us to the part of the presentation where I start talking about the story of how we, Mario and I met, uh, and how we started building a partnership with Vancouver Animation School. This is my daughter Alexa, and a year ago on the Easter break, we were in um, Vancouver. And we happened to be walking on Vancouver Island, and I saw a sign that said, Vancouver Animation School. Uh, and I said to her, let's go in and check out what's there. And of course she said yes, because it's animation and it's fun. So we, um, we walked in the door and we started talking with Mario. And I said, what do you guys do here? And he started talking and I said, well, actually, it's interesting that you do a lot of your work online because I'm an online teacher too. And uh, we started talking and in our conversation, somewhere in our conversation, about, I texted my superintendent and I said, we really need to set up a meeting with Vancouver Animation School and we need to, um, we need to see if we can build a partnership. And my superintendent texted back almost immediately saying, yes, set it up, let's do this. Um, and I'm gonna let Mario take over and take over the story from there. So I'm gonna stop on this. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome, Mario, yeah. Take off. yeah. Yeah, so let me share my screen here. So yeah, so she, uh, she walked in and uh, at that point we were developing a, um, an offering for high schools um, that it's, um, you guys see my screen now? Just yep. Perfect, yeah. So this is, this is fame and we were working on this when, um, when Jody came in and I explained what this was. And uh, from that point on, we kept on, um, I guess, financing the idea, uh, working with her, uh, meeting with Darren as well. And uh, what you will see now, this is a, um, a classroom solution that has been assembled by many, many schools. Uh, we basically assembled the technology for this with all the feedback from all these superintendents, deans, teachers, and uh, curriculum developers. So we have FAME. FAME is the acronym for Film, Animation, and Media Exchange. 
and is a classroom solution for the creative industries. It is also a content provider for art and technology. So what we do in the school, it's um, we try to see what is it that uh, we need for um, fame. And we came down to the conclusion that we need three important points. One is the education side that has to bridge into the industry side to see what, what is it that the industry needs um, for, for the great industries. And also we have the validation for the Canadian certification, uh, credits, pathways, and so on. Um, in, the, in the process of for creating anything that we do at the school, we do a bit of research and see where we are um, with our school and also where millennials are. Um, it's an important key uh, for our development because millennials keep, keep on pushing the way um, that they're learning and that forces you to keep on creating new ways of um, creating technology. So here we have um, the education in the future has to be mobile, social, with instant feedback. It has to be fun and has to be bite-sized. And th this is a key word because if you just go back to what happened to television with YouTube, and with Netflix, this is the new way of consuming um, uh, products. In this case, would be education. So schools, we believe that we have to change and do something like this soon. Um, it's also something they can do from any device at any time, uh, basically when they want, how they want, and uh, where they want this thing to be happening. Fame has been broken down in three uh, main areas. We can start with the teachers. And the main thing we've done with them is that they don't need to have any prior experience in these industries. Um, the entertainment industries are specialized. It's tough to have the whole idea about how they work, um, only if you work in big studios. So FAME has a certain guidance for teachers so that they can keep on retraining, um, upgrading this, their skills, and then teaching this into the into, the, into their um, schools with their own students. Uh, FAME is used for extension work and remedial work. For the extension work would be more the students that are the top students that they gotta keep on improving their work. For the remedial work would be the students that are lagging behind that they have to still have an understanding to the, um, what they're going through in, in, in a specific course. And this word down there that it, that it means ubiquitous learning, it basically means that they can do this whenever they want. So that could be inside the school, in school hours, in the classes, outside classes, when the school is in a break, again, from the bus stop, from the sky train, from um, anywhere they want, basically. It has to be there handy for them. Uh, this is the course library. And uh, the, the, the easiest way to describe it would be Think about Netflix, where you have unlimited courses, uh, and this is meant for schools to match and to supplement their, um, their, their own plan of studies for their own curriculum. So if, in an example that we have here, we look for a perspective, and then FAME has subcategories <clears throat> that you can search for perspective for what? For animation, for games, what grades are you teaching, what tools do you have in the in that school and also the levels for the students. And then just like that, FAME will be presenting some courses. So these are some sample courses we have from grade four. We teach them the alphabet for um, drawing basic shapes, basic um, triangles, for instance. We go into coloring, we go into 2.5D for them to really get a, a grasp of this as they keep on going forward into the next uh, year of education. This is more um, secondary schools. We teach more uh, the human uh, figure, um, more advanced concepts about anatomy, how they apply into the entertainment industries. And uh, we have like fine uh, coordination on the left. We have depth and color on the right. And we keep on bringing uh, courses like anime and manga that allows us to, to teach the human body in a very stylized way, like the mouth, nose, the eyes, the hair. And then we move on to post-secondary education, which is the, um, the most advanced courses here. And it's important to mention that all these courses that we have, uh, they're um, assembled um, in full by our faculty, again, from, from, from main studios, like, um, again, Disney, Capcom, EA, and um, we keep on developing courses for, um, for schools. Now, as a teacher, they have three main things to look for in the courses. One is the credits and the hours that they last. 
The other one would be that the whole thing about what is it that I need for uh, hardware like the computers and software. And uh, if there's any course uh, series on, on that as well, so they know where to start. Um, we also have the whole thing about um, the uh, outlines for um, curriculum matching, um, Ministry of Education, all this thing has to be there as well. We have some examples that we've been working on. How do we match um, the FAME courses with uh, BC curriculum in the arts education section? So that's one sample. We also have, um, we've been working with Alberta as well to, to do the curricular mapping here. And this is just a sample of the codes that they have on the outcomes and how they match into the courses from FAME. And then this one's from Jody. She's been working on matching also the Saskatchewan uh, courses, outcomes, and indicators from uh, what they use into the FAME courses as well. So all this is um, this is um, basically um, facilitating the work for the teachers as they keep on going into FAME. Uh, so this is now a control panel where um, teachers in different schools can start assembling their own students and assigning them into their own uh, groups and then assigning courses in, inside FAME. And this is like in one um, place, you can see the student, the progress, and on the right hand side, we have the, um, the whole thing about the assessment. We have um, the Canadian grading scale. This is good for um, Canadian uh, schools, but we also have the numbers and percentages for the international schools. And on the middle right here, we have the quizzes and the assessment type. So fame, I mentioned before, we have a, um, a bit of an autopilot to help students and teachers, but we also have the ability for teachers that know about animation that they can go in and monitor on their premises uh, their own students so they can switch to manual grading right here. If they do that, then FAME presents them with um, rubrics. Uh, we made them uh, visually um, pleasant and easy to understand and also easy to create um, as well for teachers. Uh, more uh, benefit for the students, we have um, every course has a Canadian certification. It has credits and pathways. So for instance, um, us in Vancouver, we have BC EQA, that this is a brand for um, Canadian education in the BC side. Then we have designation under the Ministry of Advanced Education. And we have the CICIC, which is the Center for International Credentials. Then we have pathways with um, Emily Carr, uh, block transfer pathways, um, and then CDM. And then we have more institutions um, in Mexico right here the Philippines, we have deals in Saskatchewan, and we'll keep on adding more. The idea for FAME is to keep on creating an ecosystem that would be neutral and uh, democratic for everybody to uh, join in and choose an institution at the end. Um, this is the course library for the students. It is the exact same thing as teachers, but with one important point to uh, mention here is that the teachers have full control on what it, what it is that they see uh, or they don't see. So they can say the whole library would be open for you or you, you would only be able to take one or a sequence of courses, depending on what the teachers want for the outcomes. This is one of the um, desktops for the, um, the course. It is personalized. It has a methodology that we call zero multitasking. So they focus on one um, topic at a time. We have um, quizzes that are very visual for them uh, to understand the, um, the course. And also, they cannot find the answer on the internet, which is important for us. And um, they have instant feedback as well, and the whole thing about gamification. Now, the gamification is about uh, rewards and incentives to uh, keep on fostering the motivation for the students. Um, we, we, now we're working on an intelligent assistant. Um, and the reason for, for bringing something like this is, is basically teachers are super busy, always doing a lot of uh, things. And, and students um, can get a bit of help from the system. So this is our AI, and it works like this. Um, it introduces itself to the students in the form of a chat. Then the, um, the students can actually chat with the um, AI and then start their day well, with them. So this is Fame saying, listen, this is what you have accomplished so far. And uh, they can see that they have attended the class on time. 
participation would be 80%, uploaded the assignments would be on time, and then responded emails within 24 hours. So this is really useful for the students to see where they are in, the, in that day or in that course. Now also what FAME is doing is that it brings also what they have in the low average um, assignments. So this one saying like the drawing on the facial structure would be low. The same goes for the science prints and the whole thing about the mind maps and the human body would be on this one. Now the student has to review that. Um, I take them into the split screen. We use this in animation studios quite often. And this is basic to show that before and after. Um, so on the left hand side, we have the, the, the work from the student. Uh, what they have uploaded, and this is what the assignment requires. So at a glance, they can see uh, what it is that they can improve for every single assignment. And this is also, uh, it's pretty, pretty good for, for them uh, to keep on working on those assignments as, um, as they go. Now, the last thing we're doing with FAME and the assistant would be that um, FAME can email a, um, send an email to the, to the teachers discussing these topics uh, for the next class so they can keep on extending the knowledge. And also we have the collaboration um, because it's all about community and uh, teamwork. So what FAME is doing now is that it brings the work from their classmates and now the student has to like uh, this uh, artwork and then that way they can earn some participation points. But the most thing uh, that is most important here would be the collaboration, the community um, of, the, of the school in that case. Uh, like that, fame is done. And the student can keep on going into the, getting a credential from that course once they completed that one. So these credentials, they get uh, printed uh, in secure paper, sealed and sent to their address. They, uh, they're completely valid for um, any, uh, any, uh, like any process that they do at um, any embassies for international students as well. Um, and then to close it off, FAME has a privacy settings uh, module. FAME is a big system. It's a, a bit of a social network. So the administrators have to make some choices based on gender. Uh, if they have girls or boys or both, uh, same for the age especially for schools that are, um, they have um, elementary school students or um, high school students. And also for the um, international side would be, they can use FAME and then as a closed system for uh, within their own school or within their own country or open that to the world. And it looks like this, uh, for instance, from a simple chat, they can see who's online in the, um, in the system and they can see um, it's basically an open space for them to see what it is they're doing in India or Dubai or Canada or Mexico. And um, with that, I can open it up for questions. Well, there's some interesting uh, commentary that was going along the way. Oh. Uh, as well. Good. You can see that. And a few other questions. I don't know whether, John, whether you want to John, take the mic and ask a few questions because you had some um, things going there as well. Yeah, no, wow. Uh, whew, I can't, I'm so impressed. I, <laughs> I don't know where to start. Uh, uh, I asked Mario if uh, the, the platform will be available in a different language, and he said it's in the pipeline. So I'm very excited about that. We are obviously looking for French for us. Um, but uh, to answer your question, Randy, for curriculum mapping for, for Alberta, I, I might know some people that might be able to do that like quickly, so. Mm, good, that'd be amazing. Yes, because we're, we're, we're going through all that with a um, couple of people from Alberta and we're trying to distinguish and, um, you know, how they do things in every province. So we're trying to understand that process and assemble all these codes. So we've been in touch with some people. Uh, Laura, she's in the other webcam, so she can talk more about that um, on that area. But uh, yes, that would be super helpful. Yeah, if you can understand it in all the provinces, then that's a commodity that you can probably use for exchange on a barter system because it's very complicated and not, not easy to understand how to best to, to map in, in those areas. Yeah, yeah, well, right. Uh, uh, and we do have like Saskatchewan to do a credit program and this is perfect for that as well. So 
Right, and we only mapped the, um, the animation course per se, um, but we will go ahead and like the, uh, like the full programs that are being offered, some of the other, the concept art, we'll, we'll probably, our next step will be to like map those as well so that we could offer it as a full program, um, as well as giving teachers the option to pick and choose little bits to work within their own pro programs as well. Right. And then, John, about the uh, localizing fame, uh, it is in the pipeline. Um, we estimate that it's going to take about um, eight months for that, um, or we'll start in about six months. It's been, um, uh, in a way, asked by Asia, uh, so we can bring this into Asia, so they keep on asking us to localize it. We haven't done it yet, uh, because we have other things that are uh, high priority. Um, but it's not a difficult, difficult process, it's not. Um, it's basically just getting the engineers and the whole um, translation, basically. It's, um, it's just work, right? But it's not difficult. So if you want to help with French, that would be amazing as well. Jean, Jean is good at that. Uh, and very helpful as well. So um, I'm wondering, uh, one of the questions that I had while we're talking about curriculum mapping to Alberta is, um, did you, uh, Mario, uh, were you coming to blend ed? Did you make any decisions about that? And is there something that we can do some pre-dialogue in advance of that October event that yep. we could help? Yep. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, so in, that, in that week and weekend from October, we, we're going to be attending the, um, the PSA uh, Super Conference. Okay, uh, we'll so we'll probably see you there. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And then, um, then uh, we got a split team here because, uh, so Laura, she's going to go to that one. We're going to go to INACOL. Uh, and then she's going to go to Blended because we're, we can't uh, be in two places at the same time. Uh, but that's the, that's the intention to be in these places. Um, um, I think like it's it's amazing because now fame it's fame it's new it's at that stage that it can be very malleable and we need um, more feedback and more ideas on how to make it more um, I guess working with the institutions right and working with the curriculums so this is a time to get all that in uh, so we're still in the um, like in that stage of uh, building fame closing that soon uh, but getting more feedback we we need all that for um, the benefit of uh, students and institutions. Okay, excellent. Uh, let me put one more on your map. And Jody, I don't know whether you're aware of it, but Ramona Stiller uh, emailed me that the DE Academy is going to go the Monday, Tuesday prior to Blend Ed in Alberta. So my journey is going to go through to uh, North Battleford, is I think where it's going to be. Oh, okay. Well, I probably will be there for sure. Okay, I might so, be able to have Laura out in uh, Blend Ed as well. We'll see. <laughs> well, I, I think there's a travel day on Wednesday in between. It's sort of the pre-conference for Blend Ed that we can probably manage. So, I think we'll we'll be we'll be living with each other for a week if that happens. That'll be great. <laughs> yeah. No, sounds great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Feedback. So I guess the question, Mario, in terms of, so you've actively recruited the connections from the animation pieces into the industry for the certificates and the other things that you're doing, similar to what Jody's done for a lot of their dual credit and other certification pieces for students. Yeah, so uh, I can tell you a bit more about Vancouver Animation School. So we opened in 2009, and we're, we're, the, um, we're the first exclusively animation school that is online that has uh, Category 1. And that means the full accreditation um, being online. So from 2009, we've been developing technology for, um, to teach art and tech in, the, um, in an online environment. Uh, and throughout all these years, um, we have been also working with the faculty and, and working with curriculums and um, getting better at academia and with all the uh, ministry requirements because we're people from the industry. So we have very, uh, like a very particular way of addressing issues um, or teaching education. Um, and then um, with the ministry, they have been asking us to become more um, I don't know how to say it, but become more academic. Uh, so we keep on bringing more people, uh, consultants, um, and people that have, uh, in a way, more educational backgrounds than us because we have 
the industry experience, but now we have to have people that have bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and PhDs and all that. So slowly throughout the 10 years, we've been um, uh, assembling that team. So FAME, it is the third generation of technology that we um, deliver. Um, and, and what you see in FAME is not just us. Um, we do the technology, but we're basically assembling what uh, the other um, people said. Uh, about 20 different schools uh, with superintendents and teachers uh, throwing ideas, and we grow them down, we build prototypes, we check with them again, and, and this is the result of um, that, all, the, all that work. Excellent. Yeah, it's good. Other questions? I have a question, Mario. Maybe it's too, uh, it's too much to ask, but is it possible to have an account for maybe a week just to check all the courses? Or it's, it's I don't know if it's possible or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be super easy. And I can show you a couple of things now. Okay. Um, so let me show you something. It's more technical, but uh, it's, it's good that you see them. The, the main thing would be that uh, you have to... Um, you have, to, you have to understand that there's a bit of a hierarchy. So we're going to have a, a seven-day uh, trial so that anybody can go in and try it out. And it looks like this. Um, you, need, you would need to choose and to make a decision who's going to be the, uh, the administrator of the system uh, because there are permissions and there are things that he would only um, own. So in this case... Uh, Michelle, if you go like that, you enter your name, your email. Uh, down there, that would be the terms of use. And um, this now secures your email. And we have the whole Pipeta, Pipa, like all these things about privacy. So you have a secure account that logs with your um, email from your institution. You uh, let us know what is the name and the country right there. And a phone number for us just to contact you in case that something happens. Passing this point on, you basically give power um, to your teachers. You invite them from this page, and then you secure that email for um, them. Uh, you can invite as many as you want uh, at this point or later on. The idea for that is that now that hierarchy comes into place, that the administration has control on their privacy and uh, the licenses, right? Because we have a licensing uh, structure on that that is very um, low cost and, and a nominal fee. Uh, so from this point on, what happened was that um, the teacher now has, um, again, a private invitation that came from you. So, so this would be a teacher account. Uh, they say, no history, I'm new. And again, password. And voila, they're in that library straight. So it's very simple, just take seconds. Once they're in here, they can um, audit every course. Uh, every course is complete from, you know, from scratch all the way to finishing. It has the exercise files. It has the, uh, the grading and it has, we have pretty powerful panels that are for teaching that they can go and see and um, peruse the courses. Now from this point on as well is that uh, the teacher would be going through the courses and once they make a decision, they would bring the students. Um, and it looks like this. At the beginning, they will have an empty list. Uh, and they can add, uh, if they want to add one by one, they're welcome to do it like that. Or they can import uh, an Excel um, file that has the whole group. So slowly, they will be populating this. They can assign the courses. We recommend that the group of the, the name of the group you assign, it's similar to what you have. So um, it's easy for you to remember. Then you assign the courses for fame. Uh, again, one by one, or you go in a bulk um, action right here. And then slowly you have a panel like this one that you can monitor in one place every single student that you have. Um, once they go into the courses, you would see uh, the grades. You would see a lot more things. It's a big system. Um, and you can export the grades into your system as well. So we have a lot of things for um, um, basically just for adapting fame into your um, systems. A lot of people use Moodle, a lot of people use Canvas, and um, you can import information and export information as well. Um, but anyway, this gives you, it's a long answer, but this gives you 
you know, a visual key on, on where and how this works. So let me ask a question on that import export. Is that a live sync or is that as the deliberate like CSV file for data exchange? For now it's CSV. Uh, at the moment we don't have any APIs because this is yeah. same version one. And uh, we'll, we'll see how, um, how it works and what is needed. Um, at the moment, because it's a system that it offers the full solution, uh, you would basically just need to import your um, student list and export their files. And final grades sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. basically basically like that. Um, and those, that, a lot of school, K-12 schools that are using an LMS um, also usually have some kind of a student information system. So integrating right. into that makes more sense if you have a complete solution that's really not dependent on the LMS. Exactly, yeah. So at Vanas, like the other side of the school, we do have um, a full solution, including uh, that system information system. But for FAME, we detached, we say, you know, this is just for the um, delivery of the courses and grading and um, the social aspect. Uh, but then passing that, like all the um, accounts and tuition and all that stuff would be a separate uh, system that they most likely would have at the schools. Yeah. Excellent. You like? I, I'm, I'm impressed with the system as well. What, what is it built on? Uh, so it's built, so the whole um, set amount of servers, uh, we use Amazon servers. Um, yeah. And then it's built with, um, we call this is a full stack. Um, that means it's a lot of our different uh, technologies in one. Uh, so from basic PHP, if you know that, we have Java, JavaScript, we have a lot of the latest Google technology for uh, real-time databases. So this, this dashboard is real-time. Uh, that means that um, any change that you would see, it happens on the fly. There's no need to refresh the browser. Um, right. So it's a, lot of, uh, it's a lot of different things. We have engineers that are pretty smart and we're they're kind of going crazy with all these things, but uh, yes, it's good stuff. Yeah, other Very nice. <laughs> Very, very good presentation. Um, I, I am uh, with the University of British Columbia, uh, Faculty of Education. I teach uh, foundations of educational technology and also sometimes research methodology courses. About the assessment, um, do you have a provision of alternative assessment in case students are not actually uh, responding the way the test um, is designed and um, uh, just about the course evaluation as well and how the teaching is evaluated by students. Yeah, Laura, you wanna answer that? She's the brain. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's really up to the teacher. So. They have as much control over this as they want to, so they can choose to use our assessments or not use our assessments, and they could choose to integrate it completely or just use it as supplementary resources. So that will be, it's very much in the control of the teacher. Does that and, make sense? Uh, how about uh, the finance aspect? Of course, uh, K-12 student doesn't pay fees. <laughs> I'll and pass you back to Mario for that Somebody else is, or international students are taking these courses. What can be done to accommodate them? Yeah, right. Uh, Randy, you got to stop the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Okay, so, so you, the, uh, what, what you're, you show this here is your whole sort of pedagogical approach for teachers in terms of how they learn how to use FAME and be right. a part of that. And so, and what you were saying is that you're modeling effective online approaches by the time you get to the SAMR model and moving them through in terms of how they would do that if their only experience is classroom-based. Yeah, Laura, you wanna maybe expand on that? Yes, I'm back. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, because what we found with um, a lot of schools and a lot of teachers we've spoken to is everyone is being pressured to bring blended learning and technology into their classroom. And in every school, there's a couple of people who know how to do it really well. And they're being approached by all the other teachers and saying, what do I need? What tool do I need? What do I, and rather than actually looking at it from the other way and saying, okay, well, what are my learning outcomes? What do my students need? And then finding the tool to fit that, right? 
So FAME's been designed so that a teacher can start off in a completely non-threatening way just by supplementing their own program. So they could, for example, say, okay, I've got one hour on a Friday afternoon. Um, my students are going to study animation and I'm going to put all my students in the animation class and I'm just going to follow along with them and see how that goes for them. So they can start bringing the technology in in a completely non-threatening way. And then as they work through our courses, we can show them how to augment and how to modify and how to get to that final stage of, of reinvention, right? So it's just gently taking them by the hand and guiding them through the blended learning model to best practice. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. I'm cognizant of the time for others. I'm happy to carry this forward, but are there other questions for Mario or for Jody or Laura? So I, I've seen what's happened as a result of this. <laughs> There's some follow-up that's already going to happen which is exciting and, and, and terrific as well. Uh, so I think this is, a, a, again, the start in April at the symposium and now moving into here and moving forward, forward. the start of a, a, a dialogue that will carry on for a while. Yeah, we need yeah. to talk a little Absolutely. more. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Matthew, I'll send you an email. Thank yeah, you. Let, me, let me actually post our emails here so you can have them. Um, or I can put them on the chat maybe. I've got, yes. everybody, I've got everybody's email. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'll email but, everybody think, straight afterwards. Also so for the recording, happens. I think it would be Thank you, Venice. for others that may watch the recording. So your emails. So are screen. you actually talking from Venice or from world? We're from, we're from Venice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my email. Mm -hmm. I'm in really? Laura. Put. Yeah. Yeah. There you are. So they can see, mm -hmm. see them right here. Okay, terrific. So um, what I want to say thank you on behalf of the Canadian eLearning Network and the folks here in the audience uh, for an excellent overview and uh, very much appreciated. And, and Jody, the, the way in which you, which you framed this for us in terms of partnerships, I think was really, really critical to help to understand and Mario the way and Laura the way in which you've taken uh, fame and moved it into uh, that teacher friendly zone. Um, you probably may say that you're not from the education side. I would say that you're very effective educators. Yes. Thank you're you. doing Thank a great you. job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. the opportunity to uh, talk again about this. Uh, Jody, thanks again for walking in, you know, to uh, the school that day. Um, you know, <laughs> this wouldn't happen uh, otherwise. Good things happen when people walk through doors and say, hey, hi, how are you? <laughs> And rather than display them, so we can leave that up, just a reminder, the, the link in the text chat there, there's some upcoming webinars on Tuesday and Thursday next week as well. And then I think we close off on uh, June the 6th is uh, with the reprise of the Candy Learn uh, Symposium webinars. So thank you very much. Uh, we're certainly going to promote the recording and have people looking at the recording as well for, uh, for this as a follow-up. So I want to thank you formally and uh, thank you to the audience as well for being here. I'm going to turn off the recording.